Okay, what is up everyone? I hope everyone's having a good day so far. Here we are. I have determined after much trial and error and finally figuring out how to transfer data from my hi handy Handycam onto a digital format, which is this Mac computer. That's what we're using today. This camera, uh, we had me and my, I think it's my brother's camera. And the last time we recorded on it was in 2005. Not that long ago, we found this Digital 8 Hi8 player camcorder in the trash. It was actually a curb alert on, I believe, Craigslist. And it came with this bag and all these tapes. So recently we decided, okay, let's get nostalgic. You know, both me and my wife, the lovely filmer, <laughs> Sammy J had these cameras when we were younger and we recorded great memories on them and wanted to bring back that you know high feel who wouldn't want it everyone knows about it you know this was the bees knees of cameras in the 90s even into the early 2000s we still use these you know to record tons and tons of stunt videos that were seen worldwide so they even have like filters that's true too and it has a night shot on it because i know Instagram this one does. Has so in like determining how to get this video onto a digital copy, editing it, a screw just fell off of this camera. That's how antique this thing is. Look at that. I'm not even kidding. That just <laughs> fell out it. of the camera. That's probably not good. But we wanted to make an Instagram video and then use it for YouTube. I'll show you guys the first day of footage that we got. But today I'm going to be showing you the footage that we shot earlier today and how to transfer from a Hi8 cassette VHS tape, one of these, onto this Mac computer. So when I started out, I figured I would plug it into this Mac computer, which is about a 2012 desktop, and it has the updated either iMovie, it's the iMovie 09 or later, so it has like all the updates. This only has iMovie 7, this is a 2008 Mac desktop. So I put it in here. I'll show you exactly what I did. So the three things you're going to need to do this are the camera itself, which actually this one is not the one that I transferred it onto. This is the one that I filmed on. So you're going to need a compatible... Where did I just put that other camera? You're going to need the camcorder, and then you're going to need the correct firewire cord, which when I first started looking for the cords, I came across this one, and this has the camera connection on both ends. So that doesn't help you at all unless you have another connector that connects into either a USB or preferably this firewire cord, which goes snugly right into the back. I'm turning this around. These are actually not even the computers I use, but we got that one for free. And this one I paid $200 for, which is, I think, a good deal. It literally, get a close-up on this, it plugs directly into the back of the Mac computer. Easy peasy. And then this end, I had these cords already, but I think on eBay it was anywhere from like $19 to $35. So the prices that... You know, you get quoted for transferring your high eight tapes are in the thousands of dollars. So if you could do this for under, you know, a hundred dollars, which would be the cost of the camera and the cord, and you could even pick up probably one of these Macs for a hundred dollars. So like, you're looking at if you have nothing to start with at all, a few hundred dollars instead of Uncle Pat paid seven grand. He said to have his transferred. So yeah, that's like a down payment on a car. It's crazy. But basically, this cord, which looks like that, it's flat on one end and curved on the other. I'm not sure if exactly what the term of that cord is, but it's considered a firewire cable. Goes into the side of this camera. So most Sony Handycams have this connection. Bam. This camera is the one that I would like to use Preferably, it's a little bit of a later version than the one we are using, but this only goes on when it's plugged into the wall. The battery, and I've read online in forums and stuff, that maybe the, a function on the camera or the battery itself is bad, or the charging of the battery on the camera is bad. So if you get an external charger, you might actually be able to fix the problem, but 
I didn't want to go that far at first until I knew I had definitely nothing to use. But I'm plugging it in with the original charger. The charger is this one. There's the model number of the charger. And pretty much any charger that is compatible with, it has flat on one end and then it has, looks like an E. It has three bumps coming out of it. Can you see it or no? I mean, if your Handycam has a different compatibility for the charger, it doesn't really matter because the charging of the camera is not important if you already have that figured out, obviously. And this is for people that want to still use the Hi8 or for people that just want to transfer their home videos that they had when they were a kid for a fraction of the price that a company is going to charge you. So first I put it on, as I think most people would do, my newer Mac that I have set up here why wouldn't you want to put it on the best quality computer you have but the problem is it's not always how it works i'm transferring the tape that we recorded with today on this camera this is a lot of explaining and stuff but i want you guys to understand how this process is working because i was super confused when i first started trying to figure this out i'm putting the tape this was a brand new tape too, out of the pack yesterday. From this camera, this is the one we recorded on, into this camera, that's gonna be the transfer camera. So, it's in there, plugged into the 2012 MacBook, Mac desktop, not MacBook, and you go to File, Import Media. So, basically, when you go to Import Media, I'm going to exit out of this again. So you go into your iMovie. There's nothing in it right now. There's just the title of an event, a uh, uh, video that we were making before. Go to Import Media. So it'll bring up a whole nother page and it'll show the Sony camera. So it's a DV VCR. It's basically showing the tape deck of the camera, like a VCR tape deck. On the camera itself, I have it on play slash edit mode. So I'm just gonna show you guys. Tape mode, memory mode, play edit. So it's stopped right now. I'm gonna re rewind the camera all the way back to the original footage that we got yesterday. Just so I can show you guys. Okay, so I hit this button here, rewind. It rewound the tape all the way to the very beginning. Stop rewind, so it was fast. It only took about a minute. I'm gonna start playing it. In it, in it. On this computer, it plays back the footage totally fine. But the problem that I ran into and all the people on the forums ran into was this. No data from device. So basically, it's allowing you to play back the footage, but the, the technology on this computer is so updated that it's not allowing the videos to be imported. Even though it says import, it doesn't import anything at all. It's recording up in the top, but it's literally not recording anything at all. So I decided, okay, maybe this isn't gonna work. I might have to try a different, a different method. But then I realized that my friend had given me a 2008 Mac desktop. And I was thinking, why would they make a computer in 2012 compatible with technology that hasn't been used for over a decade. Once everything went digital, the high eight standard definition quality was out the window, totally obsolete. Now it's bringing, it's coming back, it's spiking back because basically the hipster movement or the art movement or just the idea that people want to capture something in a way that they did when they were children or when they were younger and it's just the nostalgia of everything. Old clothes are coming back, old video games like this. You know, the whole deal. So I figured, set this up, see how this works. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna put it onto this computer. Which is older. Guys, which is much older, it's four years older. 
but it has the, the big key thing is you'll see the iMovie on this computer how it looks and then I'm going to show you the iMovie on this computer. I figured since the camera and the computer are similar in age they'd be more compatible. Yes. Pretty much. It was an iMovie 07 it's actually iMovie 09 or earlier. You can see right here about so if you have this iMovie 09 version 8.0 0.6 you should be good this one which is version 10 is not work it does not work for this at all that I've found but I could be wrong I'm gonna sit down and show you guys Watch pop. Yeah. and here's my cat he's the famous star of the footage one of them oh, that's your mini this is the little mini so I'm gonna get rid of the about because that's not really very important and we're going to go into once more. So you know how we went into import media? In this one, you can actually go into literally just this little logo right here. Well, I don't have the camera plugged in right now. So I'm plugging the firewire cord exactly the same as I did in the other computer into the port in the back, which the new Macs, like the MacBook Pro that I have, doesn't have that connection at all. So. You'd have to pretty much work off a desktop unless you want to buy extra connections. But all I did was plug it in. And it just... And it brought this up. But if it doesn't bring that up when you plug it in, all you have to do is go to this logo right here. Yeah. And it's just like a little camcorder logo. And then it just brings it's on, it up the left side. It's on the left side right above the event library. So right now I can just... You know, I'm just, I'm just going to start importing. And it's allowing me to create a new event. And I'm going to title it Pi 8 Nostalgia. Well, I don't know how to spell, obviously, but Pi 8 Nostalgia. And it's just going to start importing. The only thing is, basically, it's importing all the footage from yesterday, but I can just, once it's done, I can just go in and clip that and just get rid of it. So I'm just going to let it run for the next like 12 minutes and just get all the footage I can. It The beauty of it on like uh, a mini DV camera, like that's a lie, on basically an SD card like a DSLR camera where you just like plug the SD card into the side. Well this one doesn't have one but this one does. Takes every clip and puts it in a line so you can just look at one video at a time. On this it's just one long video so all you have to do is import one long video. You could just do literally an entire tape in one sitting, take it out, put the next one in, rewind to the beginning, do the next whole tape. So it's actually pretty easy once you get the hang of it. It might be a little hard to find the MacBook that works for it. Luckily we had one lying around because we like to hoard a lot of stuff. And actually I used this recently in the last year because um, we didn't have a different computer and we didn't have any money to buy a different computer. So I was actually exporting full YouTube videos for our main channel just you know in 720 they weren't even 1080 which to be honest I don't think it affected I don't think anyone even knew except for me even just like I was trying to get a tape for this camera so this is a VHS C but I pretty much think that the process would be almost exactly the same so I do have this entire Thing of mini DV tapes which have all videos from basically we went from high 8 to mini DV and then to the regular car that everyone almost uses now which is just the SD or the mini SD but I want to try and convert all these so maybe it, once I figure that out it's slightly different but the same I'll show you guys how that's done too if anyone's interested that's how we did it I'm going to wait for this to export, like import the rest of it, and then I'm going to show you guys it just on the program so that you can edit from there. But uh, basically all you'd have to do, I'll show you in a minute, is once the clip's in the event library, you just, you can highlight, say like you just wanted the footage, you don't care about editing it, you can highlight the entire clip, whether it's you know an hour or whatever, put it in the project library, export that, and then you can burn it onto a DVD or you could just put it on literally a thumb drive or a hard drive and just have that footage forever digital. 
Okay, once it's done importing, it's going to have a little thing that says generating thumbnails, which is creating a picture for you to see what the video is. And it's going, less than a minute. And once you're done, once it's done generating thumbnails, just hit done. And then, here's my one long clip right here. So it's 14 minutes and 29 seconds. Five, more than five minutes of that was from yesterday. So I'm just gonna highlight that and just hit delete. And then this is all today. So I have uh, eight minutes and 57 seconds of footage from today. Of just pure. The one thing that I never could figure out is if say you have like a computer like this that has version 10 can you downgrade to iMovie 9 I have no idea I think you can only upgrade to be honest but that's how you do it and basically I'm just gonna end off this video with some of the footage that we shot on the high 8 tape just like a a few minutes five you know five to ten minutes of that and just put some emotional piano music behind it and call it a day but I hope this helped out um, a couple people to transfer their footage because I know this can be a very frustrating and difficult thing to do and once like yesterday once I felt like I was getting some progress and the footage was going on to the computer bam didn't even go on and then I got depressed again and then I got the other computer out blah 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 but I hope this helps for some people to figure out how to get their nostalgic home videos onto a digital format without, you know, costing them an arm and a leg and paying thousands of dollars one. It should cost you, you know, a few hundred at most to do this. And you can do it from your, this, you know, the comfort of your own home um, at your discretion. Say that you want some, there's private uh, memories on the videos, who knows, that you don't want other people to see. Hopefully you can just pick up an old Mac for cheap and do it like this and also you can just use the Mac as a desktop computer there's nothing wrong with this Mac you could actually buy it export all the footage and then sell it again too once you put it all on a hard drive so the dream is real thank you guys for watching and hope you enjoyed the video see you next time peace I do one that's out a little bit too Okay, and the last, not the last, but the next step that I want to show you guys is, I know I just ended the video, but highlight that whole clip just with the mouse. Just grab it from one end and pull it all the way across to the end. And then literally just see how my, there's like a hand. It goes from a mouse to like a hand. Just pull that and literally just drag it right into here where it says Drought Media in the project library. And that's all in there. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna share, well actually, hold on. So what I'm gonna do to get this onto a hard drive is share it. And just export movie. And on this specific computer, it's only gonna go to 960 by 540, which is totally fine because standard def is actually less than that even so it's making the quality even better than it actually is I believe so I'm gonna put again high 8 nostalgia I believe that's how you spell it like that and just hit export and that's gonna take a few minutes that should be like 15 minutes probably even though it's a small file, it still takes a while to export. That's that's the beauty of the upgrade from this computer to this computer. It made the time much less. And my new MacBook Pro, which is a 2017, I believe, the export speed is minutes, like two minutes instead of like 20. Okay, the last and final step that I wanted to show you guys was to preserve your footage once it's captured and exported onto your Mac computer. 
So you could use one of three, probably even more different ways of saving it. You could use just a regular thumb, USB, thumb drive. You could use a SD card to save it on and just keep the card. But what I like to use is an external hard drive. So this is a Seagate five terabyte backup plus external hard drive that I bought from B&H Photo online. So I can store footage for, you know, for a long, long, long time on here because it's five terabytes. But I have some footage already from the high eight from previous things. So I'm going to take the nostalgia file, drag it over. Okay, or not. Mm. It's not compatible with this computer. So, you know what? I'm not going to do that. I'm going to eject this and put the thumb drive in. I'm sorry, guys. I thought that would work. It did not. But you just use your head and move on to the next solution because these hard these little thumb drives you could probably pick up from a flea market for like two dollars honestly but you can get them from staples or b h also so this one is compatible and basically by taking this and just dropping it basically all i have to do is just take this and drop it onto where it says tuck opens it up and it puts it right on there so didn't even put it on there we got it right there so it's going to take a few minutes maybe one two three minutes not very long at all and that should be it so even if you can find uh you know a friend or a neighbor or a co-worker someone that has an older mac computer that you could just borrow come over to their house and do it or just borrow for you know a night you could get all your footage transferred over or even if, you know, most people that have computers like this don't use them on the daily. So, you know, borrow it for a week and transfer all your footage. But I hope this helped and more videos to come. So stay tuned. Please subscribe if you haven't. And keep pushing. Keep getting that nostalgic footage. And there's always a way, even if this way doesn't work for you, to capture that footage and preserve it. So... Hopefully you guys figure it out because it is really cool to have that high 8 style footage in the archives. Signing off. Claim it. Nice down here. What, bird? <laughs>
over here and the winter's like this deep. I would have just broken my neck. There we go. Sector 9, clean. This is, believe it or not, this is the biggest hill in our entire town. That's how crazy it is around here. I'm gonna wait for these cars though. Just because I'm not gonna be off fast enough to outrun them. Oh, I can get the baby for you. 